Hi everyone, good day. My name is Madhuri Suresh and I am the senior instructor for data center at Nitit Sharma Global Tech Private Limited. Today we are going to be discussing about VPC and its terminologies. So VPC, virtual port channel, is basically a layer 2 nexus te a technology. You cannot use it on catalyst switches, it is purely nexus. So over here we have two devices between which we are going to be configuring VPC and there are certain connections, there are certain links between the two devices as well. So what these links are and what the terminologies are we are going to be discussing. So firstly what is VPC? VPC is nothing but a device level redundancy technology. We will be configuring VPC between these two devices, right? So these two devices will logically appear as a single device to this particular device that is present at the bottom. So this device will never know that it is connected to two separate switches. It will always see that it is connected to a single switch, thereby providing device level redundancy at the upstream layer. So let's discuss about certain terminologies. The first terminology is something called as pure device. What is pure device? Pure device are these two devices between which we are going to be configuring uh, VPC. So I'm going to call this as pure device 1 and this I'm going to call as pure device 2. It's on these devices that we are going to be enabling the feature of VPC and we are going to be putting the VPC configurations. You cannot use more than two peer devices in one domain. You can only have a maximum of two peer devices. Next terminology is VPC domain. What is VPC domain? So between both of these, we are going to be creating basically a VPC domain. Because of the VPC domain creation between the two peer devices between them, these two peer devices will logically appear as a single device. For the VPC domain creation, we will be configuring something called as a domain ID and the range of the domain ID is between 1 to 1000. So in this range, you can give any domain ID for both of these devices. But please remember that the domain ID has to be the same on both of them. Otherwise, the VPC domain will not come up. Always remember to keep the domain ID constant. Another thing, you can only configure one instance of VPC between one pair of device. So once, for example, I have configured domain ID of 100. Between the same two peer devices, I cannot again configure another or a second or multiple instances of VPC between them. This is not possible. Only one instance of VPC domain is what I can configure. The next terminology is peer keep alive link. This dotted link that I have drawn between the two peer devices, this is basically called as peer keep alive link. Like the name says, this particular link is used to exchange keep alive messages between the two devices. So peer device 1 will keep sending keep alive messages to peer device 2 and vice versa. It is so that the devices know about the aliveness of each other. And this particular link should be a minimum of one gig link, one gig link is more than sufficient and also there is absolutely no control plane or data plane traffic that has to be sent over this particular link. This is basically a layer 3 link like the name says keep alive messages are exchanged. It's basically a heartbeat link. Apart from this next is peer link. Your link is this port channel link that I have drawn between the two peer devices. It's a very very important link. This particular link is basically a layer 2 link firstly. Each connectivity, each connectivity that you have over here should be a minimum of 10 gig. Minimum 10 gig each link should be. You can definitely go for 40 gig as well, but minimum 10 gig. 
This particular link is what is going to be carrying your control plane as well as data plane traffic. So any layer 2 control plane, any layer 2 data plane traffic is going to be carried over this particular link. And also this particular link is also going to be uh, exchanging parameters between these two devices. So there are certain parameters uh, that are going to be exchanged to make sure that they are consistently configured. And certain parameters have to be consistent so that they can logically appear as a single device. Right? In order for these two devices to appear as a single device, they literally should be the mirror images of each other. Only then can they appear as one device. So we need to make sure that the parameter exchange is taking place. And again, you just have to configure pure link. As soon as pure link is configured, over it there is a protocol which is called as CFSOE. CFS stands for Cisco Fabric services over ethernet it's an ethernet link right so cisco fabric services this is the protocol that is by default enabled you don't have to enable this um, and do not disable it as well it is by default enabled so as soon as you configure pure link cfs is by default enabled which is basically responsible to exchange parameters between the two boxes next Downstream device. What is downstream device? DSD. This device, this is what is called as downstream device. Downstream device can be absolutely any device. That's completely fine. Can be a router, can be a switch, can be catalyst devices, can be a server, can be storage devices, anything. The only criteria for it to be a downstream device is that it should be port channel connected to the pure devices and port channel it should support LACP or static port channel because these are the only two modes that are supported by Nexus these are Nexus right so Nexus can only support LACP or static port channels PAGP is not supported so that is why your downstream device as long as it supports either of these modes to be aggregated you can use it as a downstream device doesn't matter all right now with this there is another example let's say I have some device C over here and let's say this is dual connected like this. Is C a downstream device? Absolutely not. It is definitely dual connected, but it is not dual port channel connected. It is connected to peer device 1 individually and it is individually connected to peer device 2. But in order for this to be called or considered as a downstream device, it should be aggregated like this. Okay, so this is not aggregated, so this is not considered as a downstream device, it's just a non-VPC device. The next terminology is member ports. What is member port? So these ports that are present on my pure devices that get me connected towards the downstream device. These ports that are put into aggregation, connecting towards the downstream, that is what is called as a member port. So member port, uh, um, again, in production environments, definitely there are going to be multiple links. I have just drawn two, but there are going to be multiple connections. But how many ever connections it is, they are going to be aggregated into a port channel and these are called as member ports. So you definitely can configure them to be access or they can be configured trunk as well depending on the requirements. Next is VPC VLANs. What are VPC VLANs? So these are VLANs firstly that are utilized by my downstream device. See the downstream device is always said to be a part of VPC. Why so? Because the downstream device is the only device that can see these two physically separate devices as an individual device. So whatever VLANs it is that the downstream device needs or whatever it uses, for example, I'm just taking VLANs 10, 20, 
30. These are three VLANs that are required for my downstream devices to communicate. These VLANs, I definitely have to allow them over the member ports as well. So I will be allowing 10, 20, 30 here and I will have to allow 10, 20, 30 here also. Apart from that, I will also have to allow these VLANs over the pure link. Why pure link? Because pure link is used to carry my control plane and data plane traffic. Right? So in order for the pure link to be able to carry this control plane and data plane traffic, I will have to make sure that the VLANs, the appropriate VLANs are allowed. So these are called as VPC VLANs. VPC VLANs are to be allowed over the member port as well as pure link. The last terminology is orphan port or orphan device. What is orphan port or orphan device? So let's just take an example. I have some device A which is connected, right? This device A, you can very clearly see that this is a non-VPC device. It has nothing to do with VPC. This device will not know the existence of VPC between both of these pure devices as well. It's just completely non-VPC related. Now, let us say this device is using at least one or any one. VPC VLAN for its communication. So in my example, I have taken my VPC VLANs to be 10, 20 and 30. Let's say this non-VPC device is using VLAN number 20 for its communication. You have tagged VLAN 20 or allowed VLAN 20 on this particular interface. This port is called as an orphan port and the device is just called as an orphan device. Okay. We'll give you another example. Let's say I have another device here B. This is connected to peer device 2. And let's say this particular device is using VLAN number 30 and VLAN number 50. 30 you can see is a VPC VLAN. 50 is an ordinary VLAN. It has nothing to do with VPC. You can call it as a non-VPC VLAN as well. So this device, this particular port, is allowing one VPC VLAN and it is allowing one non-VPC VLAN. This port is still called as an orphan port and this device is still called as an orphan device. We'll give you the last example. Let's say I have another device here C and to this device on this port, let us assume that it is just using VLAN number 50. VLAN 50 in my example is just a completely non-VPC VLAN, right? So this port is a non-VPC port. You can call it as a non-orphan port and this device you can just call it as a non-orphan device. It has nothing to do with VPC. Completely different VLAN is what it is using. It's completely out of the VPC domain, right? Uh, but over here, these devices are also out of the VPC domain. It's not that they are a part of VPC, but it's just that they are using at least one VPC VLAN for their communication. So that is why the port on them is said to be an orphan port and the devices are eventually called as orphan devices. So with this, we finish the terminologies in VPC. And to know more, please stay tuned to our channel. Very soon we will be releasing the next video after this. Thank you everyone.